Hi, Hi everybody, uh, this is Sean and uh, back again and so on a previous video what I did was I made up some of these little mini jars for testing LC uh, and that's what I'm going to do today. I did some expansions and uh, this is not from clones but expansions from some old syringes that were sitting around and I want to make sure it's good and this is also a couple of species that I want to start get, getting going now because they're slow colonizers and it takes a while for them to uh, get going. So I'm going to test on these jars and if they come out clean I'll go ahead and use them on full size quart jars. You could even use one of these on a, a two pound uh, grain bag to go ahead and do a grain to grain expansion and that's what we'll show you later on after these are colonized. We'll show you if these are nice and clean and I'll show you on some slightly underfilled quart jars. Now I've already drawn out my syringes. This one's Golden Nom, uh, Foliota Namico. Really nice species, one of my favorites, but it is a very slow colonizer, so we're starting it now. And we're gonna do the same routine that we did before when you saw us inoculating jars. It's just we're gonna use a lot less than these little guys. We're only gonna use a scant mill. So, see I've cleaned that, cover it up, I'm going to blame my needle. And that's because I had it turned all the way down. So get it nice and hot. Remember what I told you before, you don't have to hold it forever and start melting your syringe. So just a little scant and I just want about half a mil per side and that's good right there that goes underneath that wetted down towel keep spraying that down with alcohol and then I go to the next jar and I do the same thing it's the same routine that you saw before when we were doing uh, the full size jars when we were inoculating. We're just using a little bit less, but kind of brings it home here. And you see, this is why we wipe these things down. Um, because you do get some residue and stuff on there. And then the same routine, always flame your needles between your jars. Keep everything nice and covered. It might be time for a new torch. Well, we'll see. This thing's been acting up on me, but I've gotten a couple years out of it, so I'm not complaining too much. And again, I'm keeping track. A little scant. A little scant. And we're good. And I'll do that with all of my needles uh, until I do all the jars I'm going to do and I'm doing four of these Namaco and three of uh, hens. Uh, big fan of hen of the woods and they take forever to colonize so that's another reason I'm doing those now and it's like the first day of September. So anyway that's the routine uh, when I'm done with these syringes I'll only use a few mil. I'll of course use my twist off I've got caps that have been soaking in here for a couple weeks now in alcohol and I'll recap and store these needles uh, and if they're good I'll use them for the rest of the season all right so when these are all colonized we'll be back okay so we're back and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do that grain to grain and what I have here are uh, two jars of Namaco, those mini jars, when I did test some of my LC expansion, and I have one of Hems, uh, the Coca-Cola Fondosa, uh, and you can see I've got some spawn jars, they're only partially full, you can see this, it's, uh, there's about two cups in there, I did break this up as best I can, uh, if there's some little chunks and lumps in there, 
I don't worry about it too much. Um, it'll still call an edge. Uh, and this is pretty simple. Uh, I've already, whoa, darn thing is vibrating so much. I got a jar slipping. Uh, I've already cleaned these jars before they went in, but I took the rims off the big jars, and as I'm cleaning it, getting all this residue off, and I use a fresh pad on each one. A little bit of stuff that gets knocked in there. Now these have been stored for a few days, and they're fine. Uh, they were stored in the fridge for just a few days. Uh, while these last of these mini jars finish colonizing. Now what I'm trying to do is get as much stuff off as I possibly can before I start working with these. And I had already sprayed these guys down with something else also. But I'll go ahead and give another shot with some isopropyl. And I broke these jars up. Whoa. Lids are on there fairly tight. That's a good sign. No sign of contamination in any of this, so I know my LC was good. And what I'll do is I'll get a good shot with the isopropyl. Again, clean these. Fresh pad for each one. Boy, that one just wants to travel on me. And uh, you'll notice I am wearing gloves. Whenever I, I said before, whenever we're doing uh, open jar work, open plate work, I'm gonna wear gloves. Hairs and skin flakes and things like that can ruin your day. So we're gonna work really quickly here. What I'm gonna do is make sure this is unsealed. Make sure this one is unsealed. And I'm just going to dump it straight in without touching the jar rims. Saw that? I didn't touch the jar rims. And then I'll put the ring back on there and lock that one in. And again, spray everything down. Make sure that one's unlocked. Make sure that one's unlocked. They, they do kind of press down the seal a bit, but not too bad. Take that off, dump it in, not touching the rims. The rim's about ready for retirement for that. And, of course, the last one. Make sure that's unsealed. Make sure that one's unsealed. Dump it in. And the last rim on there. Make sure that that's seated right. The other thing, if you do that, you're you're uh, making sure you don't get any debris on the rim so that they make sure that these things seal properly. Now, can't just leave them like this. Now, we have to mix this bond. Now, people tell you they're shaking the heck out of it. I don't do that. What you'll see me do is just doing this. And I'll do this for a few minutes. And uh, I'll do this with each of the jars. For several minutes, I'll just kind of rock it like this. I you can gently shake it like this a little bit to get it mixed in. But you notice I'm not shaking it like freaking maracas. And you see some of that chunk of spawn, that chunky stuff, because I didn't bother breaking it up too much. Um, it's broken up, but it's, uh, but there are a few little, like, little pea-sized chunks and stuff like that. And then I get a little bang like that to make sure it settles in. And again, make sure that rim is down tight. Give it a couple rolls like that start mixing that stuff in. And this is the same way I do it when, uh, if I have a colonizing jar and it's at 25-30% and I decide I want to mix it, 
this is exactly how I get. You notice that shake. And when we say shake, we mean gently. Gently. You're not, you're not ringing a bell here. You're uh, just getting it mixed in. And you're not trying to be too rough with it. And I've heard people say, oh, you have to shake your jar so you can't see white anymore. And then do it every two or three days. Where do people come up with this stuff? Uh, I think it's from the old days when we used to go pretty much exclusively agar to grain. And yeah, we used to shake our jars quite a bit. And you really have to with them uh, to get them to colonize right. And I know there's still people out there who uh, swear by agar to grain. I know, and it, it works, but uh, I do prefer this LC. But again, we're not being too rough. Now, I kept track of what these are. And if you need to, I just have a little note right on this filter material, something a little uh, initial or something so you know which ones are which. And so I know that this is him. It's a G1, and it's a 26. Ah. Now this is Golden Nanamaka. And uh, G1 means it's the first generation uh, grain to grain. But I won't go to second generation, but uh, that's fine. Now these, just leave them alone. These don't need to be shaken. You don't need to do anything to these after that. All you gotta do is put them in your uh, colonization area in the dark, roughly 75 degrees what I do them at, and just let them go. And uh, I've got some that I did here about five days ago. And they're about three quarters of the way colonized again already. This is pretty fast. Once they uh, start colonizing after you've mixed them, they, they colonize most stuff. Will colonize pretty quickly on a grain to grain. So that's it. There you have it. That's how you use them in these green jars. You do it grain to grain. Easy as that. <laughs> and this, of course, can be done in an SAB if you need to. Uh, it's a little bit more awkward, but no problem. Just keep everything really clean and you won't have an issue. So, thanks again, folks. And remember, get all of your cultures into my settlement for you. Night.